hello everyone. So, we will continue with measurement of yarn heaviness. So, in our last segment we have uh, discussed the two methods one is uh, Shardley yarn heaviness tester another is uh, Zweigel uh, heaviness tester. Now, we will discuss the Worcester hairiness testing system. Okay. So, what we have discussed earlier in uh, earlier methods we have seen the in uh, Zweigel and uh, um, Shirley we measure the length of hair protruding above the yarn surface at a specific certain specific setting and uh, in uh, Worcester principle it uh, measure the amount of hair scattered uh, amount of light scattered by hairs. Okay. So, uh, parallel beam of uh, infrared light is illuminated and uh, if uh, there is uh, no hairs present or in fact, there is suppose there is no yarn present here the this light parallel light will be blocked here by the stop arrangement. Okay. These are the stop arrangement and uh, the light will not reach. Okay. Even the yarn suppose the yarn there is no hairs no, uh, filament yarn still in case of filament yarn. So, there will not be any uh, light scattering due to uh, hair. So, this uh, light will not reach that. So, light will either be blocked by the yarn or if it goes parallel it will be and that it will be blocked here. Okay. So, that uh, way that uh, setting is that that uh, the size of the block is actually it is uh, equal or little bit higher than the this diameter of this aperture. Okay. Now, if the light there are hairs there. So, hairs present uh, and this hairs will start scattering the light. So, light will get scattered and will try to move away from the straight path and all this light that they, they, they will try to uh, get scattered and the lights which will come uh, which will be uh, go to this um, this system uh, light capture system this this light will be scattered light will get captured and will get transmitted and ultimately it will be projected through uh, to the receiver. So, this amount of light which is which receiver is uh, receiving it is a that is its intensity it is quantity which it will receive it will actually it will be proportional to the number of hairs. So, amount. So, let us see the animation of this uh, principle. So, this is a, a light source it is a light when there is no yarn present. So, light is actually falling on this uh, lens okay. and then it is uh, it has converted to parallel light okay. and that actually light will be blocked here with the direct light will be stopped. Okay. This is uh, this light will be stopped here. So, any light it is uh, coming it uh, though. So, the, the transmit that intensity here light is 0. So, there is uh, no light coming here when the yarn with no hairs. So, there is a this is a yarn yarn does not have any hair. So, again the ultimate impact will be the same because it, it uh, actually it is not receiving any scattered light. Now, let us see now yarn with large number of hairs, hairs coming okay. and then this light will start this hairs will start scattering the light which will be beyond this stop mechanism and then this will be actually through this lens system it will get projected. So, this the amount of light okay, this is actually proportional to the 
the length of the hair. Okay. So, indirectly by measuring this intensity, we can get idea about the intensity of or length of total total length of the hairs. Okay. So, this is the indirect method way of measurement of hairiness, we can get idea about the prickle sensation. Okay. So, this uh, it is uh, amount of scattered light is then measured of hairiness okay. and we get ultimately hairiness index. So, um, total uh, number of length of hair uh, per unit length of hair, hair. it is a dimensionless. So, we get one index. Okay. So, this for this is for uh, comparing the values. So, these are the different ways of uh, getting data by way of uh, spectrogram or something. Now, we will discuss the uh, assessment of fabric surface hairiness okay, uh, to assess the prickliness of fabric. So, this is measured by first method is it by low stress compression mechanism. So, if the in the low stress compression measurement technique if it is compressible at uh, very low stress that means, that will give indirect indication of the hairiness. Because normal yarn, yarn hairiness yarn uh, compression is not that uh, it is uh, it's not that compressible at very low stress. If the uh, fabric is uh, very compressible at low stress that indirectly gives the idea about the hairiness present at the surface and indirectly gives the prickliness sensation, prickliness characteristics of fabric. Then it is by measurement of counting the protruding fibers of the surface. It is similar to the laser counting of protruding fiber, it is actually it is similar to Ooster measurement of technique. It is a based on light scattering technique and third is the modified audio pickup method it gives idea about the the buckling force that we will discuss here okay buckling force and uh, bending force of measurement okay so if we modify the kawabata system like kesf uh, 3 compression system which indirectly gives the low stress uh, low pressure compression testing so that actually from that data at low pressure if we modify at low pressure that gives the prickliness sensation indirectly. Okay. So, applied pressure the relationship between applied pressure and fabric thickness. So, that we can measure. So, when uh, bending of fibers protruding from the surface takes place okay, during compression. Okay. So, at that time we can get uh, the idea uh, of the hairiness or prickliness by low pressure compression system. And next technique is that it is a here is an optical system as we have seen in the Ooster uh, hairiness tester. It counts the fibers protruding from the fabric surface. So, this is the fabric surface, this is the fabric roll, it is the fabric let off and here is the take up arrangement and this is the there is a knife edge through which fabric is moving and whatever the hairs protruding here, this fire, this hairs will actually uh, scattered light, and this scattered light will be received by the photoreceptor. So this is the similar method. The, an, an optical hairiness meter monitors the amount of light scattered from the belt of the fabric passed over the sharp bend. This is a sharp bend. Okay, the fabric sample moves uh, continuously at certain uh, speed. Okay, and then we measure. So, this uh, technique is uh, similar to the light scattering technique by Ooster and we get idea about the uh, fabric surface areas and indirectly get idea about the, the prickleness sensation. Okay. Next one is which is actually which measures the prickleness sensation uh, directly which is uh, modified audio pickup technique. It measures the mean force per contact with the protruding fiber. What is the mean force per protruding fiber it measures which is actually directly gives indication of uh, prickliness sensation. Protruding fibers are there. So, this technique may be the most effective technique by of fabric prickliness okay. 
and uh, the result obtained from this instrument actually directly correlate with the subjective perception of them of the fabric prickle. This is the most actually effective technique for fabric prickleness sensation measurement. Now, this is the instrument here this is the block okay, light block it is actually connected with the load cell N a normal load you are applying and here it is a load cell is there and here a normal lead force is applied and these are the surfaces where it measure it actually this surface are used to buckle the protruding fiber. So, the buckling takes place at this point and this point. So, buckling of the fibers take place at this point and this is the stationary audio styler which actually sense the bending force. Now, with this arrangement now if we start moving the fabric this is the stationary measurement. Now, where we have applied the normal load then this normal load gives the idea about the this buckling force. So, we can measure the erected hairs are there projected here and if we apply load. So, we have the buckling force. So, the this gives the buckling force and when we may we move the fabric here it is measured the force is measured by here the um, force measuring unit and how does this force come into picture this force is coming into picture due to the projected hairs here this projected hair are uh, due to the bending force of this uh, hair it gives it gets signal from its audio stylus is there and ultimately we get measurement of force here. Okay. So, this gives this force unit uh, measuring unit gives the uh, the bending force of this uh, hairs. So, we give we get characteristics one is the, the fab as the fabric surface moves under stationary audio styler from which the signals are obtained from the contact between stylus and the protruding fiber that we get some signal of the fabric bending and the buckling buckling of the fabric. So, two classical models are uh, here one is that load uh, loaded cantilever it is a bending force we measure and Euler column that is a buckling. So, which uh, calculates the bending force and critical buckling force. So, this two parameter if we get we get the idea about the what type of hairs are present. Earlier measurement technique was indirect where we can only tell that it is a hairs are there, but here we measure the, the type of hair. If the bending force or buckling force is um, they are high. So, that means we can tell okay, this particular hair will create problem in in uh, prickles prickle sensation. Okay. So, that uh, this type of and buckling force is extremely important if the buckling force is less that means, it will not create any problem of prickleness even if there are hairs. So, the critical buckling force of the protruding fiber end is responsible for stimulating mechanoreceptors that these are the fibers if it is a high buckling force that will actually give stimulation to the pain receptors. Okay. So, this is the type of this is the buckling force Euler column and this is the loaded cantilever. So, this we get this is the normal protruding fiber okay. and we, ca we can we can see that if the fiber length is more what will happen the bending force will be less and buckling force will also be less if the fiber diameter is more then we will get higher value. So, we have uh, this uh, critical buckling force we can uh, calculate we can get this buckling force with the standard formula as pi square by multiplied by E is the Young's modulus I is the uh, moment of inertia and this L is the length of uh, the protruding fiber. So, this with this equation we can get the critical buckling force uh, that means, higher Young's modulus 
if we use a fiber with higher Young's modulus, it will give higher critical buckling force. That means, it will give higher prickle sensation. If the moment of its bending rigidity or moment of inertia of the fiber is high, so moment of inertia is actually directly proportional to the diameter of the ball. That means, if we use coarser fiber, coarser fiber it will give higher buckling force, it will give higher prickle sensation. If we use longer fiber, longer fiber will give the less buckling force that means, the what does it mean? So, it is a combination of Young's modulus, the diameter of fiber and length of fiber. So, if we have coarser fiber and if we use longer length that means, effectively our buckling force will be less. So, it may not give uh, the prickle sensation. The problem of prickle sensation is that if it is short fiber projected and coarser fiber with higher moment, moment of inertia and higher in Young's modulus and which is actually which uh, if we use a coarser wool fiber that this coarse, coarser wool fiber gives this all this negative uh, behavior and ultimately we get this uh, uh, prickle sensation. So, if we know all these characteristics, we can design a cloth without prickle sensation. Okay. So, so it is clear uh, from this equation that prickleness of fabric is actually related with the Young's modulus, diameter of uh, fiber and length protruding of the fiber. So, they are, they are the key factors of uh, prickleness. So, it as we have discussed with the increase of Young's modulus, the prickleness increases with the diameter increase it increases and with the increase of length it reduces. Okay. Now, these are the what we have discussed the objective measurement. Now, if we see the subjective measurement techniques, so this is again if we use the the psycho uh, laws of psychophysics that we have discussed that uh, it is a uh, it is a subjective perception is R s and uh, the prickle uh, uh, stimulus intensity it is S p that is we can uh, you can use the stimulus intensity by the buck critical buckling forces stimulus intensity or mean number of fibers that is uh, more than 75 milligram per 10 square centimeter this uh, number of fibers also. So, there, there this uh, there are a relationship. So, the Stephen psychophysical uh, power law that we have uh, discussed earlier. So, the here the exponent b for uh, prickleness sensation it is typically 0.66. So, what we have seen earlier for different types of sensations the this uh, exponent is different okay for i think we have, uh, that it's a for electric shock we have discussed it's a 3.5 so for uh, brightness it was different similarly for prickleness here it's a 0.66 so that is the that is a, this is the equation this we can uh, it's a actually with this uh, it's a very uh, closely correlated with the subjective assessment. Okay. So, uh, R s is the subjective response of the prickleness and uh, it is a prickle uh, stimulus intensity that we have seen and the correlation coefficient here it is a it is a 0.91 very good correlation is there. So, we can see this is the uh, type of curve where x axis is the prickleness stimulus intensity and here is the trace sensation of prickliness. Okay. Now, coming to uh, another uh, tactile response which is uh, important which, uh, which is called uh, itchiness of the fabric and this, this itchiness is directly related as we have discussed earlier. It is a activity of superficial pain receptors are directly related with the fabric prickliness. Okay. This uh, actually these are uh, highly correlated with the prickliness sensation and uh, the fabric itchiness depends on the 
high bar diameter as uh, prickliness also uh, depends on that this and the uh, fabric thickness at low and high pressure that means it is a compressibility it depends on the compressibility and uh, fabric surface roughness also. So, rough surface will give higher itchiness. Okay. Next is the fabric frictional interaction. Okay. So, this tactile uh, responses are that uh, roughness perception, perception of uh, smoothness and perception of uh, scratchiness which are directly or indirectly related with the frictional characteristics of fabric. These are dependent on the uh, basically frictional characteristics between fabric and skin. Okay. So, the presence of moisture when we actually the frictional characteristics is one aspect, but the perception of roughness increases with the increase in moisture content. Okay. So, presence of moisture at the skin surface totally altered the intensity of roughness perception due to change in friction. So, what does it mean? So, normal in dry condition if we perceive one uh, type of scratchiness or roughness of fabric, if the, if the moisture content in the skin if we start sweating its total our perception of roughness will change. So, as the moisture content increases the friction between skin and fabric surface increases which results actually with different type of tactile sensation will be there. Suppose, in dry condition when the skin is dry the fabric will try to slip over the skin surface due to lower friction between skin and fabric, but as it gets wet it will actually friction is increased. So, it will try to pull the skin. So, which result displacement of skin due to the pull of the fabric. Okay. So, this is this gives idea thus the more and more touch receptors are stimulated we will get totally different type of sensation. Okay. So, due to different receptors okay. this is the reason when actually fabric may be comfortable when we are not sweating, but the same fabric will become uncomfortable as far as tactile sensation is concerned when we will start sweating. That means, it, it actually start actually stimulate other receptors due to uh, pool in the skin okay. and this is mainly due to the increase in friction between skin and uh, the cloth due to presence in moisture. So, this is the, the one uh, study report which shows the coefficient of friction, okay, coefficient of friction between say skin and uh, the cloth a particular type of cloth at different types of material present. So, when it is a dry we can see the friction is uh, at this point, this is the friction okay, at lower level around say 0.4 or something, but when it is a wet. So, water is present okay, the friction has is it is it is it is highest friction. This is uh, there is a there are theories present it forms uh, some bond okay. so uh, and that it, it tries to drag the fabric. So, higher friction. So, this higher friction presence of water or maybe sweat so, it gives higher friction that actually stimulates different types of sensations. Now, the scratchiness. So, this is this is another source of uh, discomfort which are related with the frictional interaction. Now, we are discussing the prickliness and uh, friction. So, first uh, we are discussing prickliness and friction, prickliness we have discussed, friction related uh, aspects we are discussing here. and. Uh, Another way of uh, sensation of prickle, uh, friction related aspect is the scratchiness. Okay. So, main source of it is uh, main source of discomfort okay. and uh, it is related with the compression, bending and frictional interaction. It is actually common perception that scratchiness uh, actually main or slightly more critical as far as scratchiness is concerned 
then women in terms of scratchiness and cleanliness. Cleanliness is uh, another aspect which is related with the friction relay. So, uh, roughness, scratchiness, clinginess. So, these are uh, related with this frictional characteristics and uh, the study report shows the main are a uh, little bit more critical. Uh, this is nothing but due to that uh, it has as a actually it is due to generally men perspire more than women ok. That is a general perception it may not be true. So, uh, due to higher uh, perspiration higher uh, amount of moisture present in the skin. So, higher frictional interaction higher scratchiness higher friction higher clinginess ok. Now, scratchiness uh, main source of discomfort it is a it is a it is more in hot and humid climate. So, we feel more scratchiness in hot and humid climate why because it is a it uh, gives uh, more sweat. So, that is why uh, in uh, cold and dry climate we do not we do not feel normally we do not feel uh, scratchiness, but same fabric we may feel scratchiness. Another observation is that generally fabric from monofilament yarn result high scratchiness than multifilament or staple yarn that is our general perception and general feeling. If we wear a clothing made of say woven fabric made of monofilament flat monofilament I am talking about a flat mono it is not bulk, bulked it is not textured flat monofilament fabric if we wear directly on our body and we feel scratchiness sensation. But in case of uh, multifilament or uh, maybe staple or uh, textured we will not feel this type of uh, scratches. So, the reason behind this that it is a basically stick slip nature monofilament fabric gives a stick slip nature against the skin that gives the um, scratchiness sensation. But for other type of fabric uh, yarn uh, it gives uh, it actually it uh, any for any displacement it it does not give the stick slip uh, uh, that type of. So, this is the stick slip mechanism and this actually gives the scratchy sensation any movement with the stick slip movement it gives scratchiness sensation which is actually predominant in case of monofilament uh, uh, fabric. So, how to measure uh, the scratchiness sensation objectively? So, the objective measurement of scratchiness is that it is a the fabric is passed over a microphone ok, microphone yielded a scratchiness sound. So, fabric one uh, uh, system is there and below the attachment a microphone is placed. So, when fabric is moved there will be if there is a scratchiness sensation that will keep some sound and depending on the level of sound one can get idea about the scratchiness sensation. So, the fabric was moved at a speed of 7 yard per minute across a brass sheet above a microphone. So, it is placed above a microphone that brass sheet is placed above microphone and the fabric is moved at a certain speed. So, if there is any roughness or any scratchiness sensation, if there is any stick slip sensation it will generate some sound and that sound is actually measured ok. The signal from microphone was then sent through a amplifier integrated amplifier and it, it uh, records the sound. And there is a good correlation between the subjective uh, measurement of scratchiness by human object and this objective value of scratchiness. So, this, uh, this there is a very good correlation between this object and this scratchiness depends on there are other factors also that is a diameter of a, even if it is monofilament if the diameter is low like um, we are measure we are produce we have produced fiber from microfilament, microfilament the scratchiness may be less. 
it has to be uh, it has to have uh, high bending rigidity. So, a coarse filament will give more scratchiness value. Okay. So, good correlation has been observed. Okay. So, this is the objective measure rating and here is the subjective rating of scratchiness. Okay. So, there is a good correlation between these two. Now, the what we will uh, discuss is that the fabric handle attributes it's for expressing the uh, tactile comfort. So, there are uh, the various fabric uh, handle attributes. The quality of fabric is generally perceived through tactile sensation. Uh, the consumer always first touch the fabric before they buy. So, that, that this is the uh, tactile aspect which first first sense before we actually we, from there we can get idea about the fabric tactile sensation and majority of the fabric is rejected even if the fabric is uh, color wise even uh, size wise everything design wise it is ok. But if the fabric is tactile sensation is poor we normally do not purchase because it will give unnecessary discomfort. And Improve, there are uh, improvement in so uh, in this area the work has been done to improve the finishing and uh, the fiber characteristics have been improved there are uh, specialty textile structure has been improved to improve the fabric handle so uh, this uh, this in this area actually uh, significant uh, development has been uh, done to improve the fabric tactile sensation the fabric tactile sensation is actually it is a it is not that simple. Okay. It may be defined as the human tactile response towards fabric which in involves uh, not only physical, but physiological perception and social factors also. Okay. So, this is very complicated. Okay. So, that tactile sensation is not only this uh, fabric uh, related characteristics but other characteristics are also uh, important like uh, social factors are also there okay and uh, but we'll we'll discuss here only physical factors of the fabric so fabric physical factors perceptional factors are also there and physiological factors. so this perception physiology social factor that we have these things we have discussed earlier okay earlier sector. Here we will discuss the physical aspects of tactile sensations and uh, what are the different measurement there are uh, we can measure uh, uh, subjectively or we can measure objectively. So, this uh, aspects we will discuss here. Okay. So, fabric handle uh, and uh, present systems it can be uh, measured by subjectively by, by judge by experienced uh, people from in the industry that is a um, uh, present system and uh, by a physical movement of fabric. So, we can take the fabric sample and do some uh, test quickly with the by hand and we can uh, judge the idea get the idea about the fabric handle or tactile responses like it is a bending. We, if we, we try to bend the fabric by hand, okay, so we can get idea about its flexibility. Okay, that is the one way of uh, looking at. Then it's a uh, say uh, rubbing. So we, we, if we rub the fabric by um, our thumb, okay, finger, so that gives an idea about the friction or surface roughness. Uh, this idea we can get. So uh, this is the stretching by say it is a pressing we if we press the fabric we get idea about the softness or it is a bulk characteristics we get. Here is the stretching of uh, fabric we get uh, elasticity or uh, stretchability of fabric uh, this idea we can get and uh, this is a um, it is a shear characteristic shearing. So, we can get. So, these are the um, aspects we um, try to measure when we select a fabric clothing. But this is uh, this is not enough because this gives a subjective uh, 
actually uh, it has got uh, total subjectivity and we cannot uh, we cannot express we cannot get totality of a fabric okay we can actually uh, select a fabric broadly okay so we need a measurement technique for this so there are techniques available the techniques we can uh, divide into two aspects one is subjective uh, measurement of fabric handle or tactile related characteristics and other is the objective uh, characteristics. First, we will discuss the subjective, what are the uh, subjective ways of measurement of fabric uh, tactile characteristics. The subjective measurement techniques are, it is a uh, first traditionally the fabric uh, handle was measured um, subjectively and first it has been reported by Bins okay. in 1926, the physiologically based subjective assessment of fabric handle, it has been reported there. Okay. So, that is psychologically based, so that it measures the different subjective assessment and it uh, gives uh, the rating as we have dis discussed, different uh, psychological rating it gives, it gets uh, the value fabric is judged by the experience judged. So, experience judged they may measure this softness or uh, flexibility and gives the ranking. So, that, that has been reported in 1926. So, after that uh, by a factor analysis technique in 1958 it has been reported. So, there are uh, it uh, different underlying relationship interrelationship between fabric handle characteristics that is been reported. So, they have isolated three important fabric handle related aspects. So, these are the uh, smoothness of fabric, stiffness and fabric uh, bulk. So, these are the actually uh, the three uh, subjective characteristics of fabric they have identified and they have the bulk is directly uh, proportional to the area density and thickness of the fabric. So, they have tried to correlate this subjective uh, assessment with the sensation. Okay. Then uh, psychophysiological psychophysical uh, actually uh, concept has been uh, proposed. This concept from both uh, decision theory and information theory have been used and proposed the four different sensory attributes. Okay. These are uh, smoothness, stiffness, bulk property and also this has been proposed earlier also. Here they have again extra they have proposed as warmth of the fabric. So, warmness and coolness also gives the uh, direct tactile response of fabric. A fabric uh, may be very good in tactile sensation if it gives warmth it is give uh, very warmness. So, then we may feel little, little bit discomfort in tactile. So, they have introduced this uh, warmness or coolness. So, we will stop here we will continue in the next class. Thank you.